Hey y'all, welcome back to Pole Arms. As always, this is Doug coming to you live and in full living color from the luxurious Pole Arms Studios, aka my post divorce two bedroom apartment. How the heck are you? Tonight, we're going to do something a little bit different here at Pole Arms Studios. Instead of talking about guns and related gear and accessories, we're going to talk about some knives or knives depending on who you talk to around this glorious bluegrass state of mind. More specifically, we're gonna be taking a look at three big knives or three smaller machetes, depending on how you look at it. Regardless of how you look at it though, they are all three some badass choppers. Technically, two of them are badass choppers. One of them is a badass tactical slasher but all three are for sure, no doubt, some bad mothers in their own special ways. So without further ado, let's take a look at what we're looking at. First up, we have this badass tactical entry from Smith & Wesson. Looks like something out of a Mad Max movie, the M&P Extraction and Evasion Cleaver. Next up, we have this tried and true bushcraft workhorse. Probably as suitable for cracking skulls as chopping firewood, the Kershaw Camp 10. And last but not least, we have The Walking Dead's worst nightmare, the CRKT Half a Chance. Hey guys, before we get into the individual reviews on the three different knives, I, I filmed this video as user-friendly, as, as viewer-friendly as possible. Um, I, I know it's going to be a long video. I'm covering a lot of information. I'm covering, you know, three different knives. So I have it broken down, um, you know, so there are segments for each of the three knives. So you can, if you're only interested in one, maybe two of the blades, you can, you know, fast forward to that segment, get all the information about that specific blade, uh, Continue to watch if you want or turn off the video at that point if you want if you got the information that you wanted from it Enjoy The extraction and evasion cleaver from the Smith & Wesson M&P line of knives Out of the three knives we're going to be talking about today. This has the newest most recent release Try as I might I couldn't actually track down an official release date but I saw it for the first time on the shelves uh, a few weeks ago, and I bought it up immediately. Uh, no research, no pouring over online reviews like I do for just about everything else. No, I just thought this thing looked incredibly badass, and I, and I needed it right then and there. If you go on their website, Smith & Wesson uh, has this listed under their new products category. So I would say if it wasn't released in 2020, at the earliest, it was released late 2019. A few quick stats for you. Overall length, 16 and a quarter inches from tip to pommel. The blade itself is a uh, full tang construction made of 420 stainless steel, black powder coat finish, listed as a 10 inch blade, Realistically, if you measure from point to the end of the choil, it's more like 10 and a quarter inches, comprised of approximately a three quarter inch finger choil and approximately a nine and a half inch sharpened cutting edge. You also have three lightening cuts in the body of the blade, making it a lighter, more maneuverable weapon. At the spine, the blade is approximately an eighth of an inch thick, and it includes an approximately five and three quarter inch long sawback made up of a double row of staggered teeth. Moving down to the grip, I added the 550 cord wrap. Out of the box, the grip was just too thin and narrow. It did not fit my hand very well at all. So I needed to add a little meat and now it fits me just right. I'll throw up a picture to show you what the grip looks like out of the box, but it is an overmolded, rubberized construction with multiple textures throughout. You have a honeycomb texture as well as various raised ridges and lines, as well as 
molded finger grooves on the front of the grip, which adds to the hold. Down to the pommel, the pommel is a steel textured hammer end. I'm not 100% sure how it's attached to the blade, I believe. It is probably pegged into the end of the tang. The paracord lanyard is something I added after the fact that does not come with the knife. Overall weight of this beauty is just a tick over 14 ounces. So you're just a couple ounces shy of a full pound. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the sheath. You have your standard classic nylon construction, double stitched along the edges. You also have some rivets along the cutting edge side, around the tip, and all the way up to the start of the spine side. On the spine side, they put on a zipper, and that's to allow for an easier draw without snagging the saw back. The only method of retention is this nylon strap with a button. Okay, goes around the grip. Uh, without it, there's nothing keeping that blade in the sheath. That is your one and only way of keeping that blade in place. Flipping it over, we'll look at the method of wearing and attaching the sheath. You have your standard Molly setup, st standard straightforward Molly strap. Um, out of the three blades that we're talking about today, this is the only sheath that is set up for classic Molly attachment. Uh, you know, which makes sense. It is a part of the M&P line, the military and police line. So it makes sense that they would uh, provide a, a, a Molly setup for attaching the sheath to a vest, plate carrier, pack. But you can also attach it to a standard inch and a half or inch and three quarter belt. Uh, they gave you a about a, approximately a two inch belt loop to accommodate any, any standard belt so you can wear it that way as well. And it would be a, a pretty low hanging classic dangler setup. Uh, I just have a cheap off the shelf work belt of mine. Um, pretty straightforward guys, it's not rocket science. <laughs> just you're running your belt running your belt through that loop. Um, this is just a, an inch and a half belt. Obviously you have more room for a, you know, a thicker uh, inch and three quarter belt if, if need be. But you just run it and it, uh, it hangs in place. Pretty, pretty standard. Now I've got to say, I'm not a, a huge fan of Smith & Wesson's choice um, for, this, for this sheath. Normally, nylon is, is a perfectly ex, uh, acceptable choice of material. Um, I, I like you know, a nice, sturdy, well-constructed nylon sheath. But the, the, the real problem, the real rub lies uh, with the, you know, that double row of teeth uh, on, that, on that saw back all along the, the spine. I mean, you can see right now I'm getting, I'm getting hung up on the nylon and, and fibers uh, just trying to draw the dang thing, getting, getting snagged on the, on the strap. Um, and look, you can see, you can already, already see right there just from drawing it a couple times. That's all chewed up um, on the inside. Uh, try, yeah, there you go. On the inside, the uh, the inner lining of the zipper is chewed up. Um, it's just, uh, it's it's really easy to do. I mean, that that sawback is gnarly. 
and it's just too easy to catch. Now, I mean, they, they tried to compensate for it by giving you this zipper, but this is a tactical knife. You know, it's, it's a part of the, the military and police line. Um, you, you would think that if you're going to draw it, you, you need some relatively quick deployment. Um, you know, you already have to throw the snap, which, which isn't a big deal. Most of those guys and, ga and gals are used to, you know, with maybe a thumb brake system uh, keeping their pistol in place or keeping their uh, you know their batons or whatever other gear they have in place that's not a big deal but you're gonna you're gonna throw that snap and then have to reach down and completely unzip the sheath in order to try to deploy that blade without snagging um, any of the lining or the not you know the nylon strap on the way out, um, it's it's just not going to hold up. It's not going to hold up, I don't think. It would have made more sense to go with, you know, some kind of an injection molded or Kydex sheath for this thing. Um, and you could have done it in a way that, you know, that, that saw back wouldn't, wouldn't chew up the inside of that Kydex or plastic. Um, you know, on, on any kind of Kydex uh, gun holster, they, they compensate for any aftermarket sights that you might have, which would be kind of in the same place on a pistol, you know, the, the, the top end of the, of the slide. They, they compensate for any aftermarket sights you're going to put on that pistol by providing you with a nice, wide, tall channel that any size, you know, any standard size aftermarket sights that you put on that gun, uh, you know, it, it'll, it'll slide right in and fit into place. So they could have custom molded um, some kind of a, and they didn't even have to custom mold it. You know, they didn't even necessarily need to have any kind of, um, you know, passive retention on the holster itself. The holster itself, they still could have kept, you know, some kind of a, a strap system for it, um, but that that Kydex, I mean, it's, it would still have been you know durable, still would have been water resistant, uh, but that that gnarly sawback wouldn't chew it up. They did, you know, again because it's it's going to be if you're going to put it on a belt and not a Molly system, um, it is going to be a, a dangler. So they did provide uh, an open an open rivet um, so that you can you can put some 550 cord on there and use it as a, uh, a tie off uh, around your leg to keep the thing from from bouncing around so I guess that's kind of nice uh, also something they could have done on the uh, on the Kydex or the injection molded version and this is I mean we'll get to this uh, when we get to it but I mean this is the the Kershaw Camp 10 sheath and this is just you know a relatively thin um surprisingly rigid just injection molded sheath it's not kydex just injection molded um and it really doesn't have any retention it really actually wiggles quite a bit and the only thing keeping the blade in place again is that nylon strap that goes around the back and snaps in place um also you know rivets for um open rivets for uh, a leg tie off with, with 550 cord. Uh, so I, I think M&P, um, I'm sorry, I think Smith & Wesson kind of dropped the ball on that one. I think they should have gone with something uh, more like this Kershaw. And uh, I think it would just be a better fit for this gnarly, awesome blade, um, specifically that, uh, that, that gnarly, easy to snag saw back you know like i mentioned earlier I, I did do that 550 cord wrap on the grip um which which added enough meat to it to uh to the point where the original uh nylon strap would not fit around <laughs> the grip anymore so i just went ahead and modified it i just um you know tore out the stitching 
Uh, bought myself a, uh, a you know snap installation tool uh, with some new snaps and um, you know stretched out basically uh, stretched uh, there's enough material to where I could stretch it out put the new snap on and restitch it and uh, you know it fits just fine so keep that in mind if you do end up modifying that grip like I did in in any way uh, that that uh, factory snap might not fit so at the end of the day it's just a basic okay functioning sheath i really appreciate the molly system they put in place for attaching the sheath being a part of the mmp line it just it just makes good sense so i like that but Overall, just not happy with the choice of materials. I think Smith & Wesson really did us a disservice by, by making the sheath out of nylon. Again, it would have been a much better idea to go with injection molded plastic or Kydex. And it's all because of that, that saw back. If, if this knife was just a straightforward cleaver with no saw back this sheath would have been totally adequate but that saw back is there and so I, I just don't think this nylon sheath will will hold up um, so I couldn't recommend this sheath but what are you gonna do you can't buy the thing separately they're they're a package deal so it is what it is, folks. Impressions and opinions. Uh, overall, I like this knife very much uh, for what it is, um, which is a $35 gnarly, intimidating bladed sidearm, a tactical blade, a weapon. I mean, that is its primary purpose, to slice and dice flesh and blood bad guys, whoever is in your way and to intimidate them the whole time you're doing it. Um, like I said in the other segment, this thing looks like it is straight out of a Mad Max movie, some kind of dystopian future nightmare escape. Um, it is beautiful and gnarly, and I love it. Um, again, for what it is, which is just a bladed weapon. It's made of 420 stainless steel, so that's great knife steel you can get a very sharp edge but you're also going to lose that edge you know relatively quickly with repeated use but you can also get that edge back very easily very quickly especially if you're constantly maintaining that edge after each use so it's ideal for a bladed sidearm you know a perfect complement to you know, a police officer or soldier's sidearm, their slung rifle. Um, this thing would look great uh, and function great uh, on their belt, on their pack, as a bladed weapon. The rub for me lies in the fact that it's marketed as a, an extraction and evasion tool. In order to be you know, and a tool that can tackle any medium to heavy duty task you might come across in any standard evasion extraction scenario, they probably should have made it out of some more durable, hardcore steel. Maybe like some of the carbon steel, the carbon tool steel that the other two blades are made of, or any number of heftier, beefier, uh, more durable steels out there. Because this can be used, yes, primarily, you know, its primary function is a weapon, slicing and dicing bad guys. And for that, I'd say it checks the box big time. This thing is super light, super easy to swing through the air, very maneuverable, okay? Light, thin blade, uh, and you actually have, uh, the added benefit of having basically, a, a, for all intents and purposes, a double-edged blade. Uh, usually those things aren't 
legal and technically this really ain't that. But again, realistically for all intents and purposes, that's exactly what you have. You obviously have that big gnarly cleaver blade, but then you have that equally gnarly double row of just gnarly saw back teeth. And if you catch hold of somebody with that back end, whether or not it's intended for that purpose, you are going to slice them open and it is gonna be a nasty wound. You're probably gonna take an ounce of flesh with you. So as a weapon, you know, I think this thing, again, checks the box in a, in a very big way. You know, and also, yeah, again, super light, big part of the reason for that is the lightning cuts cut out, okay? Going back to whether or not this thing is, can be used for heavier, you know, medium to heavy duty uh, extraction and evasion tasks, that's really gonna be a, a detriment to that. I mean, those are big chunks out of the body of that blade. Makes it lighter and cut through the air faster, but arguably they compromise the structural integrity and durability of that blade. Um, it's already a thin blade. You're not going to use this thing to do any kind of really heavy chopping. Um, you can use it for some lighter duty chopping and cutting. Um, again, some lighter duty extraction and evasion tasks. What could those be? Um, let's see, if you're, if you're trying to extract a hostage or hostages from a, from a bad situation to safety, um, you're probably gonna have to come across bindings. Uh, so cordage, you know, different kinds of ropes, things like that. This blade would be perfect for going through that. Um, thicker cordage, thick, thip, thicker, sorry, thicker ropes, um, you know, your braided, cabled ropes, like mooring line, um, you know, boat rope, things like that. Um, that saw back especially would cut through those things like butter. Um, extraction from a vehicle, seat belts, any kind of nylon strap. Again, this thing make quick work of anything like that. Zip ties, anything you're gonna come across that can be used for binding or something that is holding somebody in, restricting somebody, this thing would be great, uh, yeah, it would be great for those things. But it's not gonna be, you're not gonna be doing any heavy chopping. You're not gonna be digging into, into door frames, into door slabs with this thing. You're not going to want to be uh, breaking out any, any glass in a car. Um, you're not gonna be cutting into any, any kind of sheet metal. You know, you're not gonna be uh, digging into a, a car door with this thing. Uh, maybe some of those other blades that we're looking at uh, that are made of the, uh, the, the carbon tool steel, they might be able to handle something like that. Uh, but I really don't think this blade will handle those tasks. Again, it's primary purpose and, and the, the one thing that I think it um, would, would probably excel in is, is to be used as a, a bladed weapon to slice and dice the bad guys. And it's only $35. If they were to use, you know, beefier, more hardcore tool steel to make this thing just a, a general purpose, all around perfect extraction and evasion tool, it would carry a, a much heftier price tag with it. So for $35 to get this much knife that I think would do a fantastic job Slicing and dicing the bad guys to be used as a tactical blade, a weapon. I don't think you can go wrong with the MMP extraction and evasion cleaver. So what would I use this blade for? When would I actually carry this blade, take it with me? What scenario, what situation would have to arise for me to strap on this Mad Max short sword? Well, this obviously isn't an EDC blade. I mean, I guess it could be if you were that guy, but 
I ain't that guy. So you're not gonna see me strapping this thing to my belt and walking into Walmart uh, with my open carry pistol <laughs> on the other hip. Um, hey, if that's your bag, baby, you do you. So not an EDC weapon. When would I use it? If situations got so bad, if it was so SHTF that I was getting the hell out of Dodge and I was grabbing my pack and slinging my rifle and heading for greener pastures with my family, then I would probably strap this thing on my belt. Uh, and I would probably have the Kershaw Camp 10 in my pack or mollied to my pack uh, to be used for any of the medium to heavy duty stuff out there, any of the bushcraft work, the camp work, uh, or the heavier duty extraction and evasion tasks that I don't think that this thing can handle. Um, I, I do think the Camp 10 could probably bust out some windshields, probably cut into some car doors, and uh, definitely chop into some door slabs and door framing and, and any of that awesome hardcore good stuff. So, uh, yeah, so this thing would be on my belt in that kind of a situation, that kind of a situation. Shy of that, shy of that SHTF big daddy that's going to have me walking down the street strapped with my rifle and, you know, my war belt and, <laughs> you know, everything else on. Uh, shy of that, um, you probably wouldn't see me carrying this thing. Um, I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even throw it in my, my bag because uh, it would just take up more room. I've got plenty of tools, plenty of urban survival as well as wilderness survival tools in that bag already. And uh, it, you know, if I was only gonna take one knife with me in that pack, it's going to be the, uh, the Kershaw Camp 10 because it just checks all the boxes. Also a big gnarly F off blade um, an intimidating blade that can be used as a weapon, even though it's not its primary purpose, uh, can definitely be used uh, as, a, as a hardcore tool that can handle medium duty to heavy duty tasks. Um, so that would be the one, one blade I would take with me. But uh, so this shy of some kind of, again, crazy, crazy out there scenario where you know everything has gone to hell um this thing's probably just going to stay hanging up in my my gun cabinet but uh again for what it is I like this blade a lot it is gnarly it is intimidating and it would make i think an incredible incredible tactical bladed weapon for you so check it out and again for 35 dollars i really don't think you can go wrong. The Kershaw Camp 10. Out of the three knives we'll be talking about today, this one has been around the longest, first introduced back in 2012. Overall length, 16 inches. The blade, full tank construction, made of 65 MN carbon tool steel. It's a recurve drop point style blade, listed at 10 inches, but like the M&P Cleaver, more realistically measures just about 10 and a quarter inches from point to the start of the hilt. Also like the Cleaver, the sharpened cutting edge is just about nine and a half inches. At the spine, measures in at a beefy 3 16 of an inch, making this thing perfect for batoning through firewood. Moving down to the grip. Like the cleaver, I did a 550 cord wrap, not because it wasn't substantial enough to fit my palm, but because the out of the box texture was just too aggressive. And I'll throw a picture up 
to show you what the out of the box texture looks like. And you can still see elements of it poking out from underneath the paracord. But it is a, a very aggressive raised pyramid or raised diamond plate texture, which initially, it, first of all, looks super cool. Um, and initially it felt pretty good in the hand. But after taking just a few practice swings around the apartment, uh, I, I quickly realized that after repetitive use, it would just start to chew up my hand. So that had to go, thus the paracord wrap. And it actually adds just enough meat to the grip to, now, to, to where now it fits my, my hand perfectly. It fit pretty, pretty good out of the box. Um, it could have used just a little more meat and that's exactly what the paracord gave it. Uh, one of the great things about this grip is that it, they included a molded uh, palm swell on both sides, so it really uh, fills out your grip very nicely. Constructed of an overmolded plastic with a rubberized insert. Again, full tang construction. They went ahead and included two lanyard holes for you to give you uh, more options on how you wanted to tie off your lanyard. I went ahead, like the, like the cleaver, I added this uh, paracord lanyard after the fact that does not come with the knife. This bad boy weighs in at 18 ounces or a pound two ounces, most of the weight being in that rounded out belly section. It is definitely tip heavy, which all good choppers should be. You want the weight of the blade to do most of the work for you. I like this one very much. I really think of the three, this is my favorite. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about this sheath. I mean, first of all, it's just a sexy sheath, I think. Really like the, the aesthetics of it, the look of it, the design of it. Really goes along, I think, with the design of the you know, over-molded plastic and rubber grip. Uh, it just all looks like one well-designed piece. So I like that a lot. Not just because of the, the aesthetics, the design, but also um, because of its functionality and versatility. Specifically when it comes to the methods of wearing and attaching the sheath to your belt or gear. But I'll get into that in just a little bit. First things first. The sheath is constructed of glass-filled nylon. Uh, and, and you know, and I, I, I watched a ton of YouTube videos about this, about this knife before I bought the thing, like I tend to do with any, <laughs> any purchase I make. I always do that research. But I watched a ton of videos and it seemed to me that this thing was, it almost seemed like a, a thin, flimsy, kind of floppity, almost like a hard rubber. So I really expected it to be, to be that uh, when I got it. I was, I was actually pretty surprised at how, uh, how relatively rigid the thing is. I mean, there's definitely some flex there um, and it's definitely, you know, relatively thin plastic, but it's, it's not that kind of floppity rubberized material I, that I expected it to be. It's again, surprisingly rigid. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Um, you know, held together with, you have snaps that are interchangeable. Okay, front and back, so you can change it if you're a lefty or a righty, um, if, depending on how you want to carry it. If you want to do a ranger carry, you know, sideways horizontal carry, strap it to your pack, you want to put it on the top of your pack, the bottom of your pack, the side, you want to, you know, do an upside down. 
draw, or however you want to do it, um, you can you can switch that strap out. Um, and once I start talking about the uh, the methods of, of attachment and, and carrying, I'll talk about how you can switch out these straps. It's, everything's reversible. Everything's reversible. The other side of this sheath uh, is the, exactly the same as, as this side. This is just how it came oriented. So the Kershaw, you know, the stamp Kershaw logo, exactly the same on the other side. So it's the exact same looking sheath no matter how you orient the straps for, uh, for your specific needs. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then of course you have these grommets all the way around keeping in place I thought maybe there'd also be some some glue some kind of an adhesive but um, I noticed that down here you know this this space where the grommets are spaced out a little bit further I've noticed there's a little bit of just a little bit of separation so I, I don't think any glue is actually used I think you just have the uh, the two screws up here and then the grommets all the way around. You also have a, sorry, you also have a, a seat pole. So if any water, get, you know, this is an outdoor knife. This is a, a, a camp knife, a bushcraft knife. So if any water gets in there, you have a drain hole, a seat pole for it to come out. So I thought that was a nice little feature that I just noticed the other day. Pretty cool. And then um, you also have the grommets. Now these, these grommets, of course, can also be used for 550 cord. Uh, if you wanna lash it onto your pack, you can, you can do so. So I thought that was a, a nice touch, a good option. And then the grommets down here at the bottom. If you use the, the belt loop, uh, the way it's the way it's oriented here, it's going to be a a, a dangler setup. It's going to dangle uh, pretty low, so you can run 550 cord uh, through those two grommets to tie off your leg, to tie around your leg, to keep keep the thing from bouncing around if you don't want it to move freely uh, while you're moving. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, as far as, now the, again, it's uh, glass, glass filled nylon, you know, not Kydex. Um, and it's, there, so there's, there's no retention. There's no retention, um, you know, whatsoever. It's, it's actually pretty loose in there and it, it actually has a lot of play. I mean, you can hear that. Um, a lot of play, a lot of, a lot of noise. Uh, the only method of retention is this nylon strap goes around the back of the grip, wraps around, catches the other side of the hilt, and then snaps in place. And once that's snapped in place, if I can get it to snap in place, there we go. Uh, once it snaps in place, it's it, it's not going in there. It's pretty secure, but you do still hear that that play. You, know, you, you, you do do still hear that wobble. Um, which you know may or may not great on your nerves if you're um, if you're on a long trek. Um, but so yeah, pretty secure with that in place. Um, I'll tell you what, it, it's it's actually it holds the knife in more securely now. You know, once I did this 550 cord wrap to the grip, just because it it adds a little. You know, adds a little meat to the back, so it makes the, the strap fit just a, a hair tighter. So it's actually a little more secure, again, just by a hair than, uh, than when it came, uh, when, I, when I took it out of the box. Well, let's flip over and take a look at the, uh, the methods of, of attaching the sheath to a belt or a pack or whatever you want to attach it to. Out of the box, comes like this. Uh, you have these two thick Velcro straps, okay? And they just, again, they just lace into the openings in the, uh, in the nylon sheath. 
waste them through. They wrap around, close together like that. Um, this top one has this long, again, this dangler attachment, also Velcro, um, that provides you with a belt loop. Uh, you can see this piece of Velcro is not actually attached on the top. It's just free floating, you know, stitched, double stitched on the bottom. But that's so that once you close that Velcro, um, you know, you're still able to have, and I guess realistically they could have stitched it on the top too and you would still have this loop, but um, oh well, they didn't. <laughs> so there you go. So you have that belt loop. And again, for the people that didn't watch the, uh, my discussion of the M&P cleaver sheath and just fast forwarded to the Camp 10, this is just a you know cheap off the shelf work belt that I'm using for demonstration purposes. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty simple. Again, not rocket science. You know, you loop that through, loop that through your belt, and you know, there you have it. And you have a a low dangler setup. And that is, if I skipped over it, that strap is actually stitched in pretty securely, uh, double stitched and cross stitched into this top. Uh, this top strap here okay so it's only it's only on there uh, it's not velcroed it's it's stitched in so that is one piece so you have that um, but again a lot of versatility I really like the the thought they put into the design of this sheath um, except for the actual material which I'll, I'll get to here in a little bit after I talk about all these straps and, and, and methods of attachment um, I, I would have preferred that they made this thing out of a, you know, just a classic standard, you know, fabric nylon, like the other two blades we're going to be talking about today. Um, but I'll get into, I'll get into that and, and the whys of that uh, a little bit later on. But so yeah, they, they just put a lot of thought into the, into making this thing a very versatile sheath so that you can attach it to anything you want. I would have liked to have seen uh, some Molly straps, you know, so you can you can uh, attach it to a, a Molly system on your pack, um, but they don't. Now you can buy, you know, separate individual Molly straps of different lengths, which I'm sure I will pick up uh, for this for this sheath, and then you can run it through your Molly setup. Easy peasy. Uh, yeah, I would assume it would make sense to just run it through, run it through these thick straps and lace it through your molly that way. So that's really the only thing missing. Um, the only the only knife that is set up with a molly is this uh, M&P cleaver. But again, it's it's part of the military and police line, so it makes sense. But molly is such a common uh, carry system, attachment system for any any you know, hiking pack, you know, camping pack, survival pack, whatever. Uh, it's so common that every one of these sheaths should should have uh, a Molly system in place. Um, but oh well. Shy of that, you know, really impressed with, with what they did here. So you do, you have these two thick straps, and again, they are interchangeable. Um, and I'll show you here in a second, but you can take this one, move it down here. Uh, to bring this belt loop a little further down, it would still be, of course, a dangler setup, but it would be uh, it would have a a uh, much lower, or I'm sorry, a much higher, yes, <laughs> a much higher ride height. There you go. But you can also, and and they're reversible, so that you can again lace them through, and uh, they would be on the on the back side. And this side would be the, uh, you know, the outer side. So very versatile there. And I'll, I'll kind of go through really quick and show you the different, different uh, things you can do with the different straps and different positions. Um, but real quick before I go through all that, so you can you can also um, bring this bring this down uh, just to get it out of the way. Um, you know, put that away. You can use you can run your 
belt, you can do a ranger setup, a horizontal carry. Um, and again, I'm, I'm a righty, I'm right-handed, so if I were to, to do it that way, or even strap it to the, uh, the bottom of my pack, uh, in either way, on the, on the outside of the pack or underneath, uh, or even on the top of the pack, um, of course, I would want to switch all those straps out so that you know it would be carried in that way so I could reach behind with my strong hand and pull the grip. Um, but so the way it's set up, yeah, it's set up right now. If you're going to do the ranger carry, the horizontal carry, it's set up for, for lefties out of the box. And, you know, you would just run your, and you can, you know, you can undo these to, to get them nice and loose. And, you know, run, run your belt through. Run your belt through and... You know, there you have it. You have your Ranger carry, your horizontal carry. So I thought that was really cool. I like that that feature quite a bit. And then I'm going to start moving some some straps around and show you what the uh, the different options are. So um, let's see. Like I mentioned, if you and you got to be careful. I was playing around with this the other night, just looking at the thing uh, because these Velcro pieces. You know they're just they're just stitched on they they really don't leave you a whole lot of room here um in these these nylon loops you know they're integrated into the sheath um so if you're if you're careless about it you can you can snag um, snag the edges of these velcro pieces and uh put uh, you know undo stress on those those stitches so you really might just want to take your thumb and, and push them down and kind of just kind of walk them through. And then once you clear that that first edge, uh, you know you're you're free and clear to pull it pull it right out. You just want to be careful there. So once you have that one off, you're gonna want to do the same up top here. So, okay, once that's out, and see, with those off, you can see it's, it's a mirror image. Uh, both sides are identical, uh, which, is, which is really nice. And again, you can, you can just switch out the snaps. So I thought that was very cool. It's just, it's just more versatility. Um, it allows for more customization, which I think is huge. I really personally, Really appreciate that. Shows they put a lot of thought into it before they uh, before they put the thing out. So I like that a lot. But anyway, once that is off, you can put it back here on the bottom. And again, it's it's you know real easy. You're just snaking it through. I'll make sure I'm doing this right here. Yeah, you're just snaking it through. Same on the other side. Okay. And once that's in place, now you have the belt loop, you know, considerably lower. Okay. So that means once you put it on your belt, it's going to give you a higher ride height. You know, and some people. Some people like that. So again, just more versatility, more customization. Okay, so that's how high it would ride. Okay, on your waist, if uh, if you drop that loop down. And then if I wanted to switch it over, uh, reverse reverse these big thick straps over uh, to attach it. You know, any different way to customize it the way I'm going to carry it on my pack. Uh, or on my belt, uh, specifically if I wanted to switch these out so that I could do a strong side ranger carry or horizontal carry, uh, I would just flip the sheath, the sheath over, come over to the front, and run these back through the exact way they were on the back, just in reverse. But there you go. And I could put the other one there and, and let you see. But... Um, I'm not going to do that, you get the idea.
you know, you would run your belt, run your belt through, run your belt through, and then it would be oriented to your strong side like that. So again, just a lot of, a lot of versatility. I really, really appreciate that. So much to like about this sheath and for all intents and purposes, I, I do like the, uh, the glass filled nylon. Um, I do like it. I do think it looks super sexy. I think it goes with the aesthetic of the whole, the whole thing, the knife and the sheath together. I think it's just a good look. Um, you know, that, that nylon, I mean, it, it, it gave, it gave them the rigidity they needed to be able to make this thing so versatile and customizable, you know, to where you can just lace those straps through those nylon loops. So, uh, you know, I get, I get why they did it. I'm just afraid that, as I mentioned with, with the MP cleaver sheath, I think that I think that this this material or an injection molded plastic or a kydex would have been better suited for a more tactical blade, especially one that has that <laughs> gnarly saw back to it, because I think this would hold up to that saw back a lot better than this fabric nylon. That saw back just unsheathing this thing, drawing this thing just a few times I have, it's already torn up the inner lining of this zipper. It's already snagged this nylon strap. So I think that this material would be better for that, that kind of an application. Um, but because this knife is a, you know, it's, it's a camp knife. It's a bushcraft knife. It's, it's, you know, it is a, it is a tool. It is a beater. Um, I, I just think that, you know, a fabric nylon sheath like this, um, or like the one that comes with the, you know, the half a chance machete, I just think it would be in the long run more durable. I think it would have longer longevity than this. I'm just afraid that, you know, when you're out running around in the woods and, uh, and, and beating on it, beating on it, you know, doing all the bushcraft and the, and the camp work, uh, that it, it just seems like I've seen, I've seen hardcore Kydex just crack and split, uh, you know, after impact or just from daily wear, you just kind of sit on it the wrong way. You go to a restaurant, sit in a chair the wrong way and it, it cracks the Kydex. So, you know, if you're, if you're outdoors with this thing and this is your survival blade, um, I just think it would be easy for it to crack or split, um, you know, especially when, if it got really cold. So, uh, because, you know, nylon does not like, you know, hard plastic nylon does not like the cold very much at all. It tends to get very brittle, you know, the sidings of homes, things like that just gets really brittle and harder to work with. So I just think it would be um, more likely to split crack uh, on you when you need it the most, uh, more so than a, you know, a fabric nylon sheath. Um, and, you know, as far as, as far as the, the rigidity of the, the loops for, you know, for the versatility of the, uh, the, the attachment straps, they could have figured something out. They could have, they could have uh, done reinforced, you know, done reinforced loops in the, in the fabric nylon. Uh, they could have included, um, you know, metal, metal reinforcement. Um, they could have done something like, like CRKT did on their half a chance sheath, you know, and included, uh, you know, metal rings, metal loops that would have allowed you to run the, run the straps through there. There, there were, um, you know, a couple of things, a couple of things they could have done to make a, you know, fabric nylon sheath work. And I think that's maybe what they should have done. I think M and P, I think uh, Smith and Wesson and Kershaw, <laughs> uh, kind of got their wires crossed. And I think they gave the other companies knife, um, you know, the sheath, 
uh, the wrong sheath. You know, <laughs> I think they should. I think they should kind of switch the materials on the two, and and everybody would be a lot happier with the final result. But you know, besides that, uh, and it is you know it is relatively a big deal because I don't think if um, I, I don't think it. it it has a has a better chance, a bigger chance of of failing on you of, of cracking and splitting than the than the fabric nylon. But shy of that, um, I really do like this sheath. I, I love the I love the versatility. You know, I love the customization uh, of how you can carry carry on your belt or attach it to your pack. Um, so overall, pretty happy. Opinions and impressions. This is my favorite knife of the three. This is my favorite by far. Uh, for me, it checks all the boxes. It's primarily a bushcraft tool, wilderness survival tool. They can also be used in a lot of medium to heavy duty urban survival situations. And as far as a weapon goes, this thing is, is also just a gnarly, intimidating F off blade can be used as a very effective weapon. It is a little heavy, uh, definitely heavier than the, uh, the M and P cleaver. Uh, as, as previously mentioned, it's tip heavy, you know, all that weight is in that belly because it's a chopper and I mean, that's its, its, its main intended purpose. And so that extra weight makes it a very good chopper. Uh, maybe not as great uh, of a weapon. Um, you can still you can still swing this thing, and if you make contact, um, you're going to ruin somebody's day real quick, real bad. Um, but it just doesn't, you know, it, that weight it it just doesn't slight when you're swinging it. It just doesn't slice through the air uh, as fast, as efficiently as the M and P cleaver. You just don't have that recovery. You can't uh, you can't do the follow up swings that you can with the cleaver. But again, the cleaver, its primary purpose is to be used as a slicer, dicer, as a tactical weapon. This is not, but can be used for that purpose very effectively. I think they use the right kind of steel for this blade. It's that uh, carbon tool steel. Uh, this thing is, is beefy and durable and it can handle, I think, just about anything you throw at it. What would I use this blade for? Well, if, if I was going to only take one blade with me, if I was only gonna have one blade in my pack or strapped to my pack, this would be it. This would be it. Out of this blade, the M&P Cleaver, the CRKT Half a Chance Machete, this one is the, is the best all around multi-purpose blade that checks, again, checks all of the boxes. It's big enough to do what it needs to do. It's also small enough to carry it very easily, to throw it in your pack very easily, to strap it to your pack very easily. Um, it is beefy, it is strong. Uh, it fits great in my hand, you know, with that, with that paracord wrap that I did. Um, it just fits superbly in my hand. It has such a good feel. Um, you know, you have the, the two holes for, for, uh, for more lanyard options. And, uh, you know, when I wrap that, when I wrap that lanyard around my hand, I mean, I just have such a good, strong purchase on this blade. It's not going anywhere. And I know it's going to do what it's intended to do uh, each and every time. You know, this thing has been around for a long time. Uh, it's been around for almost 10 years. Uh, and they really haven't made any changes to it. As a matter of fact, they just uh, just released uh, this same knife in a, uh, in a tan. Uh, instead of gray and black, it's uh, tan and black. Um, so they're not, they're not making any changes. They're only uh, releasing uh, more versions uh, because if it ain't broke don't fix it and I think uh, when they came out with this knife they got it right the first time and they just kept pumping these things out and people keep buying them up for very good reason so yeah the one knife 
uh, I would take in any SHTF situation, whether it's a, throwing it in my get-home bag in an urban, you know, urban survival situation, whether it's some crazy big daddy SHTF situation to where I'm bugging out and getting the hell out of Dodge, grabbing my family and you know, hitting the old dusty trail, whatever the situation, uh, this is going to be the one knife that comes with me. Now I might use some of the other knives, uh, especially the CRKT machete, depending on the specific nature of my situation. Um, but again, those would be supplementary to this. If there's only going to be one, this is it. So guys, I can't recommend this enough, especially right now for around $45 on Amazon. Uh, it is worth every penny. Uh, I, I can't imagine that you would go wrong buying this knife. Check it out, guys. I had to move my camera up for this one. This is the CRKT Half a Chance Machete, introduced in 2014 as a follow-up to the very popular Chance in Hell machete. This one is a Parang style machete, full tang construction, total length 19 and a half inches. The blade made from 65 MN carbon tool steel, and it has a black powder coated finish. Estimated length on the blade, 14 inches, but realistically it measures in at just about 14 and a half inches from tip to the beginning of the grip with an approximate 13 and 3 quarter inch sharpened cutting edge. At the spine, very thin, measures in at just a 1 32nd of an inch. Total weight, 20 ounces or a pound, 4 ounces. This one has the thinnest blade and weighs the most. Moving down to the grip. Hey, what do you know? No 550 cord. Why? Because out of the box, this grip felt amazing in my hand. Overmolded rubber construction with a football or pigskin texture. You have prominent finger grooves on the front and a nice rounded out back strap. This thing fits perfectly in my hand. It's like it was made for it. You have one, two, three, four, five lanyard holes, making it the most versatile out of all three blades, giving you the most options for how you wanna tie off your lanyard. Unlike the other two companies, CRKT actually included a substantial length of 550 cord to be used for your lanyard. So this does come with this blade. Like the Kershaw Camp 10, this is a tip-heavy blade with most of the weight being found in this rounded out belly portion here. Also like the Camp 10, this is a very durable workhorse of a blade. I like it very much. Now out of the three blades we've looked at, this one most fulfills my fantasy of having an honest to God short sword strapped to my hip. Okay, so let's talk about this big boy's sheath. You have your classic fabric nylon construction, double stitched all the way around. You have a series of grommets all the way around the blade edge, around the tip, and then back around up here to the start of the spine side. On the spine side, it is completely left open to allow for the draw of that big old Parang profile. Blades kept in place with a series of nylon straps and snaps. You have one snap holding the grip, the, uh, the finger groove, finger guard, however you want to look at it. Kind of a little minimalist hilt in a way. 
So first snap holds that in place. And at this point, you still can't draw this blade. Um, just too wide, the belly's too big down at the end. So you need to disengage one, two other straps. And then you can draw the blade just fine out that spine side opening. That's a lot of snaps to, uh, to throw in order to get this blade out. I mean, this isn't exactly a, a tactical blade or a, a quick deployment blade, I, you know. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a, a deal breaker by any stretch that you have to throw all those buttons off. Um, just kind of a hassle, but I mean, because of the shape of the blade, uh, you, you know, you really, you really need that. You really need that, uh, that opening on the spine side to be able to slide that blade out. So I get it. Um, but realistically, if you were to now, if you were to just snap that finger guard strap, um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's really not secure. It can slide, it can slide right out of that side, that finger guard, hilt, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it can slip right out from underneath that strap and uh, the blade can slide right out of that, that opening in the sheath. Um, but if you were to add this first strap, um, that makes it secure. You know, that makes it secure. It's not coming out um, in any direction. You're not even really going to be able to, since the, the tip is tucked in to the bottom of the sheath and the opening doesn't, doesn't start, the opening doesn't start until the start of the spine, um, you're not gonna be able to slip that out, um, you know, tip first either. So just those two alone will secure this blade. Um, I, you know, I guess the third is just an added layer of security. Uh, and retention, so that's fine. But I would say if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to have to reach down or, you know, if it's gonna be a, a dangling blade, if you didn't want to reach down and bring it up to unsnap that third snap, I would say you'd be okay with just those top two in place. Now I mentioned earlier that CRKT uh, was very thoughtful and thought to include a, a nice lengthy uh, amount of 550 cord to use for your lanyard. Uh, well, they also went ahead and gave you a, a pretty substantial length of 550 cord on your sheath. Uh, they ran it through, laced it through some of those grommets and coiled and tied it off at the end which is nice, um, which, you know, that will um, lend itself. Well, for one thing, you have, you have an, a, a length of 550 cord for any, any emergencies. If for some reason you're left without any cordage, um, I, you know, I suppose you have a little, bit, a little bit of cordage with you on the sheath. But primarily, and we'll talk about it here in just a second when I flip it over and start talking about the uh, the methods of attachment and carry. Um, but primarily, I'd say you could use this 550 cord, the included 550 cord, uh, to lace it through the various grommets and just give you one more point, point of attachment uh, on a pack or what have you. So I think that that will really go a long way in aiding uh, tying, this, tying this sheath off, uh, lashing this sheath uh, to a pack or or something else. Uh, of course, it is going to be, well, one of the main methods of, of carrying this blade is going to be a, a low dangler. It's already set up um, as, a, as a dangler system. Um, I'll show you in a second, you can make it uh, hang even lower off your belt. Uh, and if that's the case, you may want to use some of this paracord and a couple of these lower grommets to tie off around your leg and keep that blade from bouncing around if, if that is your preference. Okay, let's move on up and take a look at the methods of attaching this thing to your belt or a pack. Uh, it all comes down to, all methods of attachment pretty much come down to this included nylon strap 
with a Velcro closure. Um, the way it comes out of the box is like such, okay, to where it is just a nylon loop that you can run a belt through. Okay, run a belt through it like that. This is such a big blade, it's hard to keep it all on camera so that you can see what the heck I'm doing. But, um, you know, again, this, this ain't rocket science, folks. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, but you put your belt uh, through that loop the way it's attached out of the box. And that shows you the, the ride height. That shows you the ride height on your belt if you wore it that way. You can also, now this, which is typically where, where on, the, on this kind of a setup on a, on a sheath, uh, you know, typically this is where it dangles from. Usually there's a, there's a, a belt loop on this portion here, and not the case here. That, that opening um, is not wide enough for any sort of belt whatsoever. It's really just to allow this metal loop uh, to rest in there. And you can use that loop, keep the, keep the strap still in place, laced through that, um, you know, that, cross, that cross loop, leave it in place and bring that metal loop down, snake that through, reattach it. And now you still have that that loop opening, but that that metal loop is keeping it from uh, from pulling away from your body. It's kind of it's it's pulling that it's pulling that grip closer to your to your body and not allowing it to bounce. So it would be again not rocket science, um, but it would look like that same same ride height, same ride height. You know, same exact ride height. It is just uh, just a little more secure, really keeping that really keeping that grip close to your body, so it's not it's not flopping flopping around, bouncing on you. Okay. Then we also have undo that, pull this pull this strap out, and now lace it through that metal loop, and now you have a very low dangler setup okay put that thing on your belt and it's going to hang uh, way down low and really freely move with you while you're walking the trail so again not rocket science loop it through and i'm, I'm not going to be able to show you i guess i could stand up and move the camera or, camera around, but I'm not going to do that to let you show how it, how it hangs. Again, not rocket science, folks, you get the idea. So you put it on your belt that way, and you can see how low below your belt line that sheath hangs. And then, of course, you know, we already talked about the 550 cord that's included and the grommets. Uh, you don't have, because of that open spine side, you don't have grommets all the way around. So you're kind of limited with how you can use that 550 cord and those grommets to lash it to anything, a pack or what have you, um, but they are there as an option. Now, I said earlier when I was talking about the, the two other sheaths that out of the three we're talking about today, the m and Cleaver is the only one that came with a dedicated Molly set up and that I would have liked to have seen all of these sheaths with a Molly setup. It just makes good sense. Molly is probably the most used available attachment system on any kind of a pack, whether it's a bug out bag, a camping pack, what have you. Most of them are, or it's very easy to find Molly attachments on all those packs. So it just makes sense that, that every single sheath for big knives like this that are intended for, you know, tactical purposes or, you know, survival purposes, wilderness or urban survival, 
it would just make sense that they all would come with some kind of a Molly system, but they don't, only that M&P blade does. Uh, again, I mentioned with the Kershaw Camp 10, if you bought additional Molly straps, you know, the snap straps, you could, you can make, you know, you can make it work. You can make it work with what's included in this sheath. You can make it work with the additional Molly straps. Okay. You can attach it to your pack just fine, but it doesn't come with a dedicated strap in place. And same goes for this, um, with, with this cross piece, this, this little cross loop, nylon loop, and the paracord and grommets in place down low, you can make, you can make it work. Um, if you have that, those additional Molly straps, um, especially the, you know, the really long ones, um, you could, you could run that through, you know, the Molly ladder or the Molly webbing and make that work. It just doesn't come that way. So all in all, pretty happy with the sheath guys. I had to take a step back from the camera to show this bad boy. Uh, this is the impressions and opinions segment of the video for the CRKT Half a Chance Machete. Uh, yeah, that thing is just, I mean, just, just look at it. It, it really is a, a thing of beauty. You know, one of the things about CRK, CRKT that I really appreciate is that they really spotlight their knife designers um, usually they'll they'll at the very least put the name of the designer on the blade sometimes the the designer will will sign the blades um, because they, they really are I think genuinely works of art so I think that's pretty pretty cool that they uh, that CRKT as a company um, really promotes and highlights uh, their their knife designers this one was designed by Ken Onion, and man, he also uh, designed the, uh, the the earlier version um, of, of this machete, the uh, Chance in Hell machete, which is more of a straight blade standard machete profile. This is the follow-up, and I, man, I think he just knocked it out of the park. This thing really is a, a piece of art, uh, a functional, functional, durable, dangerous, <laughs> deadly uh, piece of art. You know, when I started this whole big knife buying venture, my intent was to, it was to find an honest to goodness, genuine short sword uh, for any kind of crazy SHTF situation, something I could strap on my belt to complement, you know, as a as a bladed sidearm, to complement, you know, my pistol, my rifle. Um, but man, hand forged swords are expensive. The turnaround time is insane, crazy, especially right now in the time of COVID, and even the even the you know mass produced battle ready stuff you can find online you know also also pretty pretty pricey um but this thing uh, for all intents and purposes checks that short sword box for me um just a great size blade intimidating you know it's it's not its primary purpose isn't to be intimidating it's not to be used as a sword as a weapon but it's sure as hell can be used for that purpose and I think extremely effectively. This thing has a lot of F off to it. It's intimidating. Um, it is beefy. It is heavy. It is, you know, front heavy. I've already discussed that. It's, it's you know, point heavy. All that weight is in the, you know, that big widened belly, which makes it an excellent chopper. Uh, also doesn't make it the perfect weapon. Uh, you know, it is he heavy, it is long. Um, so it's not as maneuverable as the other two blades. Um, you don't have that 
doesn't slice through the air very quickly uh, or efficiently. You don't have that recovery and follow-up follow up swings, but by God, it, it can be used uh, for that purpose, I think, very well. Of course, its primary purpose is to be used in wilderness survival, bushcrafting, uh, clearing, any kind of clearing needs you have, it is a machete, and, and, that's, and that is its primary purpose. And one of the attributes that makes this thing such a great machete, such a great chopper, uh, is the ergonomics of the grip. Um, out, of, out of all three blades, this knife, this machete, has the best out-of-the-box grip ergonomics. Um, I, I really like the way the Camp 10 fits in my hand, but that's really only after I did the uh, 550 cord wrap to it. Uh, now it fits my hand very well, but out of the box, man, that kind of diamond plated rubberized texture was just so aggressive. I really couldn't imagine using that thing for very long at all without wearing gloves. Okay, this thing out of the box fits my hand perfectly fits my hand perfectly um, the you know the, the the full tang is curved you know you have the over molded rubber grip that that follows that tang curve and it when you when you grab that grip that blade is just naturally in an optimal chopping position. It orients that blade exactly where it needs to be to be a very effective chopper. So uh, this one definitely wins out in the grip ergonomics category for sure. So what would I use this bad boy for? When would I take this with me? I already said that if I can only take one blade with me in any SHTF situation or even just going camping or hiking, uh, if I can only take one, it's going to be the Camp 10, the Kershaw Camp 10, hands down, uh, no questions asked. It is, I think, the best all-around, most versatile blade of the three for sure. Uh, so, so why this blade? When would I take this? Um, if I knew that, well, if I, if I knew that I was going to an environment um, or thought that I may be going into an environment that would require, you know, this size machete, you know, if I thought that I was going to be um, out walking the trail, you know, if I was going to, uh, and, and I might do that uh, this fall, I, I might check out um, and hike um, a segment of the Appalachian Trail. Okay, I live in Kentucky, a buddy of mine, uh, in the past, he's, he's, done, uh, he's done big, long segments, multiple segments of the trail, and I've always wanted to do that. And I would like to uh, go out there and, and practice uh, using some of these blades, using some of my newly acquired bushcrafting skills and uh, just survival skills that I'm working on, trying to, uh, you know, just trying to add to my skill set, trying to make me, uh, you know, a, a, a bigger, better uh, survivor if, if any kind of crazy SHTF situation occurs. Um, so if I knew I was going to be out um, on the trail and that there was going to be a whole lot of clearing that I had to do, um, then I would take this blade. Or if I thought, like I said, if I thought there was even uh, a, a small chance, I would take this blade. Um, maybe I would, if I knew for sure that I was going to be out on the trail doing the clearing, I would have this thing on my belt, okay, as my primary. And then I would have the Camp 10 in my pack or, or mollied to the outside of my pack. If, if I wasn't specifically going to that environment, but I thought it might come up, then I would possibly uh, stick it in my pack or molly it you know, to the side of my pack and then have the Camp 10 uh, inside my pack for just uh, easier, uh, more efficient, camp work, bushcrafting, etc. So really primarily uh, this thing, it would be, it, it's really too much blade, too much knife uh, to be used for uh, your average camp work, you know, any kind of bushcrafting you have to do. If you were doing a lot of, um, you know, shelter 
building, uh, if you were trying to set up wind breaks for your fire and and things like that, then this you know this then this might beat out the Camp Ten, um, just because of the ergonomics and and the length of this thing. Um, you know, it, it might it might handle. Uh, it might handle, you know, uh, cutting and sharpening, you know, those big lengths of, uh, of branch, um, you know, a little better. But as far as like sitting around the campfire doing, doing smaller scale camp work and bushcrafting, uh, I would I would just go ahead and, and pick up the Camp Ten and uh, use that. So you know, this definitely has uh, a purpose. It definitely has a place. Um, if I could only take one with me, it's going to be the Camp 10. If I'm going to, to uh, take two, definitely going to be the, uh, the Half a Chance and the Camp 10. And again, I would use this as a supplemental blade to the Camp 10, and I would use it for its primary purpose, which is uh, you know bigger clearing jobs, any kind of dedicated machete work that you need done um, this would be the one and, and guys uh, for this uh, the price range it's kind of all over the board I got it uh, off of a website for around I think like $56 um, I thought for a while just by just from doing uh, internet searches trying to find the thing I thought it was discontinued uh, but I'm wrong uh, you can you can find it on CRKT's website. I think they're charging like upwards of $75, $80 for it though. Uh, and like I said, I got it from Walmart for about $56. After I bought the thing and it came in, I checked out Amazon. At the time, I could not find it on Amazon, which also added to you know me thinking that maybe it was discontinued. Uh, after I got it, found it on Amazon for even less. Um, it was probably like around $45 or so, but uh, I really don't feel that bad at all. I feel, I feel pretty good uh, about spending $56 for this blade because I think it is worth every penny, guys. Uh, the CRKT Half a Chance Machete by Ken Onion. Uh, check it out, guys. I don't think you can go wrong. I think you'll be happy. Okay. There you have it. As promised, a pretty lengthy video. Uh, covered a lot of information. I need, I need a beer and a nap. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, but hopefully, you found what you were looking for. You got the information you were looking for. Guys, I appreciate you checking me out. Again, subscribe. Click on the bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up in the very near future. Um, I'm, I'm currently putting together kind of an all-purpose emergency pack. Uh, you know, kind of an urban survival slash wilderness survival get home slash uh, bug out bag. Uh, I'm currently trying to accumulate all of the goodies that are going into the bag. So I'll probably shoot a series of videos um, following that process. So I love to see you guys back here. Come back, check it out. Uh, as always, guys, this is Doug coming to you in full living color from the glorious, luxurious Pole Arms Studios. And hopefully see you next time, guys. Peace.